This is Laura Bell. It's March 1st, 2014. I'm just driving around up to the top of my property to feed my horses up here. Now just watch what happens everyone when, because i got to drive through here anyway, so she's going to get her baby up anyway. But watch as I walk toward, watch how she'll tell her baby to get up. Watch. Sorry this is so shaky, I'm walking and... Okay, now watch. The sun just went behind a cloud. Watch her tell her baby to get up though, see? See, she's gonna nuzzle his ears, or her ears, whichever it is, I don't know yet. I haven't gotten that close. But watch mama. She's watching me, and she's still protective of her baby. But watch, I'm just getting closer. I'm about 30 feet away. I have this on zoom, so it looks like I'm closer than I am, but anyway, but just watch. I'm just kind of walking along like I always do, and normally she wouldn't like move away at all, or she might take a few steps away. Watch, watch. She's gonna probably touch her baby's ears here any second now, and tell her baby to get up, that they have to move away. See, the other band is right, part of the band is right here, eating off the ground, but watch. Hey, Mama! That's a very party baby. You're gonna let me get pretty close, huh? You're such a good mama. We love you. Oh, she's just still watching me. That's interesting. She's being really trusting right now. She's looking at me, checking me out, seeing what I'm doing. I'm still over on my drive around pathway. So she's, a, they're a little ways up in the sagebrush, obviously. Getting out a little bit. Okay. So I'm just walking like straight ahead. I'm not actually walking toward her. I'm just walking like I'm walking around the top. There we go. Because I have to drive around here anyway, so it's not like I'm going to make her get her baby up just because. See? Look at her. She's telling the baby, okay, it's time to get up, baby. Because she's walking through. Hi, Erky. Look at her. Look who's there. Hi, Erkers. Well, she went back to eating. Let's see what happens. Like I say, I'm not walking toward her. So, because if she'll let me drive around without making her baby get up, then that'll be fine. But, hi, Erkers. Herkimer is going to walk over there now. Like, okay, do we... Ooh, Mama flattened her ears at Daddy. Mama's the boss in this herd, so... He's the protector. Mama's the boss. Hi, Mommy. She's the one that tells everybody pretty much what to do. There you go. See, she nuzzled the baby's ears. But I'm just still kind of walking down below. There's Zorro. Just walking down below. Zorro's only about five feet from me. Hey, Zor. Let's see what she does. Well, she's not feeling. See, if I walk toward her, if she'll let me drive by, then... Oh, she, okay, the baby got up. She she was a little uneasy about it. So, um, if I had walked toward her, she would have nuzzled its ears or kind of bitten the baby's ears a little bit, like, get up now. And the baby would have gotten up and... What, oh, look, at you just jumped over the sagebrush. They're so cute. So, anyway, she's just going to move them away, and I'll go back and get in my truck, and I'm going to feed these bales of hay, but obviously they have plenty of loose hay to eat here, so. And right over there is where Mama had her baby in the hay over there. So, anyway, she had a nice soft spot to have her baby in instead of just the sand and the sagebrush, which is, I'm sure, what she's always done in the past, I would imagine. But look at her. See, she's going to take her baby further up there. So I'll drive by here in a second. But, yeah, she's like, okay. And then Herkimer, he's like, okay, my wife's walking up there, so they'll probably all start to move that direction. Mama pretty much leads them. She is the lead mare. She's the only mare in the herd, but she is the lead mare, probably is a lead mare in most any herd that she's been in. So, um, so when she walks away, usually she'll walk away a certain distance, and then, um, then the other ones follow. And then Herkimer usually brings up the rear, or if there's a problem, he'll drop to the very back and defend his family, and Mama leads him. So, look at the little baby following the Mama. See? They're just gonna heading up that direction. They feel pretty comfortable. They do roam this whole neighborhood. They roam this whole neighborhood here. But, anyway, they um, spend a lot of time between the back of my house and the front of my corrals, or between the top of my property and the back of my neighbors. Um, and then they do roam over further to the west. We just try to keep them on the south side of the highway so they're not crossing over. Um. Oh, there's my maniac little magic. That, my Mustangs. Ah, Josie! Josie!
do you think of that baby? He's staring at the baby. Look at it. He's going, that's a cute baby. I like babies. All my geldings like the babies. My Mustang stallion, though, is being a putz. I had to put up chain link panels over there. He was running the whole length of his corral, and I thought he was going to jump over, or he would have gotten hung up on the top rails. So last night at like 2 o'clock in the morning, or maybe 1 o'clock, uh, I was just really worried because my biggest concern would be he would, of course, engage with Herkimer, and they'd have a fight, and what if the baby got stuck in the middle of it, whatever. So I finally had to corral him down into a smaller corral until he settles down a little bit because he... I was very concerned he was going to try to go over the fence. So he's agitated. He's upset right now. But, oh well. I tried to convince him he shouldn't be doing what he's doing, but he was just not going to listen to me. So he got corralled down. So too bad for him. He'll survive. He'll be fine. But I hate doing that to him. But <laughs> he's just being a jerk. He just likes... He, ever since the baby arrived two days ago, he went from being totally mellow, no problems with Herkimer or his sons or getting fresh with mama or anything like that to being a flipping maniac so look at mama way up there these guys are like okay we're gonna stay down here and eat and we'll come up there sooner or later I think she's going up there to check out in front of the house uh, see if there's anything interesting to eat up there so. yeah listen to magic my goodness dude he just likes that baby I don't know he's a pretty gentle stallion I don't think even though it's another stallion's baby, I don't think Magic would kill the baby because he's really good with mares. He's really good with geldings. He's actually a pretty mellow horse. He seems to be fascinated with that baby. So, I don't know. And he was wild till he was five, five years old. So he has, my Mustang stallion has experiences with um, bands of horses. Probably, I'm sure he was in a bachelor band, but he's probably gotten his butt kicked a few times by mares. So he's very, very um, polite with mares and actually with other horses. So I, I just, I think it's that baby. He, he's fixated on that baby and I don't think he wants to kill it. I think he wants that baby. So anyway, but anyway, here's the boy boys. But mama's way up there now. Went all the way across. Yeah, she's still moving her way. She's going to go to the front of that house. Little baby's in tow following along. So anyway, that's just kind of an interesting dynamic that uh, I thought people might be interested in seeing how these wild horses kind of uh, communicate to their children and how they teach them that, you know, to work off of their natural instincts, but you're in a herd and, um, you know, you got to be a member of the herd and you got to work like a well-oiled machine. Otherwise, it can be mean the difference between life and death for these wild horses. So anyway, pretty interesting. This is Laura Bell, March 1st, 2014.